What's up? My name is Eric Butler. This channel is called Report and Opine, and we have a clip here from MSNBC by way of Resist the Left Instagram account, which of course is a sort of based right-wing common sense meme account, and they're posting it just to expose the insanity that the left is dealing with right now and probably will be for a very long time. But their heels are too dug in, right? All of their talking points that make no sense, they can't come out and say, all right, we, were, we went a little heavy-handed on that, we'll, we'll back down. They can't do it. It's too late for that, so they have to keep doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on all of this insanity that makes no sense. And now the trans lobby is angry with the far-left activist Pink Okami rag New York Times because of some apparent anti-trans reporting, and it's completely off the rails. Let's see what this person has to say. How is the New York Times reinforcing this anti-trans narrative? Okay, so first of all, I guess I guess the one on the left here is an actual woman, and she works for the channel, and this is a woman that is turning into a man and is the lobbyist who's angry at the New York Times now, as I understand it. So I think woman on the left woman transitioning transitioning into a man on the right i think it's very confusing but that's the point it's chaos so you always have to just jump through hoops they're going to change the rules once a week what are they doing wrong yeah i i first want to say that this isn't new and i think that's mm -hmm. what, what an absolute joke oh the voice here is crazy one of the important things that the contributor letter pointed out is that you can go back in history and see this over and over again. And particularly if you go back and look at early coverage of gay people, coverage of the AIDS epidemic, this is something. Dear New York Times, stop questioning trans people right to exist uh, and medical care or something. So they're, they've taken out ads. This is crazy. Now, they, they, they're already using the premise that this makes sense, right? So they've, they, they won't even acknowledge the idea that maybe everybody doesn't have to agree with this. Like, they are just so deep in already that if you don't, I, right? Like, they're not even entertaining the idea that maybe there are some people out there who are going to say, mm, this doesn't really add up. So, I mean, it's so extreme. It's, I, it's crazy that the Times has done by failing to have a self-reflective analysis of the biases they bring to the coverage of, of certain communities. The New York Times, this is as far left as it, well, okay, there's obviously like admittedly socialist publications, but the New York Times is as far left as the mainstream can possibly go, and they always eat their own every single time and especially the trans community. Mm -hmm. I think Jonathan Chait had this piece that was like, oh, well, you know, this is about real harms, not like the bathroom mm -hmm. context, which that's just wrong. States are passing bathroom bills now. States are criminalizing trans adults going to the bathroom. It, it that's not true. States are criminalizing trans people going to the bathroom. No, what they're saying is, and I don't know, you can tell me what state this person is talking about, is that if you are a man, you go to the men's room. If you are a woman, you go to the woman's room. You Again, we, we see dozens of prisoners identifying as women and getting transferred to a women's prison, but we see zero women identifying as men and going to the men's prison, right? So they won't extrapolate that at all. They'll just say, oh, you're, you're making sure that a trans person can't use the bathroom. That's not what's happening at all, but this is how extreme it's all gotten is very systematically designed to be about quote unquote harming children. Mm -hmm. But this is beyond parody for the record. I'm going to try not to stop it every single second, but this is beyond parody. This is like an SNL sketch, like this weird looking person who's clearly trying to be a man with his beard and this haircut. And then this womanly voice talking about, you know, oh, you're not letting trans people use the bathroom. It's crazy. Like the, the manipulation, the doublespeak, all of their tactics are at play in one little thing here. But what we're seeing in state legislatures goes far beyond children. We have bans on care for, for adults. We have criminal laws that would make it a crime for a trans adult to go into a restroom where there may be a minor present. I'm a trans adult. I have a minor child. How? How, how did a trans adult get a minor child? How did that happen? They won't explain that. Right. It's because none of what they're talking about actually makes any sense. So you have to follow just just 
wherever we zig, you zig. You can't go opposite us. So one day it's about women's rights. The other day we don't know what a woman is and just keep following us. Eat every single little dropping that we put on the ground for you. Otherwise we're going to call you a bigot and, and go on news stories about how you need to improve your cover. They're going to, you know, protest Dave Chappelle and protest J.K. Rowling, all of these people who are not even remotely right wing. But if you every single talking point, if you do not obey, they will attempt to burn you at the stake. Like what? Like, think about what that means and think about the history of situating people as threats to minors for just existing. But, you know, we have good data that's published from from this country that shows that the good data from who? The increase of gender affirming pronouns, gender affirming pronouns. This is so dark in a single context, single context, like at home, at school, at work, decreases suicidal ideation. And there you have it. Every single thing with them is life and death. Every single thing right from the mask to the shot to the environment, to the gender ideology. If you do not obey, somebody will die. And they don't realize that the card, even racism, right? The card has been played so much, it doesn't make sense anymore, right? There's maybe a handful of people in Portland and San Francisco who are still buying this, but, you know, they want to talk about racism constantly, but I bet you they don't want to hear that most black people, at least, you know, I, I don't want to pretend like black people are a monolith, but traditionally, black people aren't, aren't buying it. Most people aren't buying it. Most people aren't buying it. You go through the entire middle of the country, nobody's buying it. But then when you pull up on Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York, they get their handful of people that end up on TV pretending that this is all real. And this woman wants to talk about, we have good data. Yeah, from who? Because they're going to censor any doctor who says they don't agree. They're going to slam any doctor. They're going to smear. They're going to stick media matters on anybody who doesn't agree. And then talk about our science. Trust the science. Trust democracy. It's insane. By 29% and actual suicidal action by 56%. Yes, yes. If you don't let us trans the kids, somebody's going to hurt themselves every single time. So as the parent of the trans child, I should have the right if they need a note from a healthcare provider, I can get it to say at school, my child needs to be appropriately confirmed. How at school, my child needs to be appropriately confirmed. I, I mean, it, it, it is very religious as well, right? Like just obey, just have faith in whatever we tell you is going to be true. So this is what's happening over at MSNBC, right? So we have loads of other problems. We have loads of other psyops and distractions. But this one is, is arguably the worst for me because it undermines the entire reality, right? Like I always say, if you can convince a little kid or an adult for that matter that a man can magically become a woman just because he so thinks it or the other way around you now have complete control of all of their thoughts so all reality is hinged on that right man woman child that's how we all exist and if they can undermine that of course they will they can trick you into believing that the air outside is deadly of course they can trick you into believing that you shouldn't drive a truck or you should eat the bugs right? Of course, they can trick you into anything because that's the biggest ask. Our, our own reality, our own existence is the biggest ask. And if they can trick you into that, everything else is easy. We can, you know, we can fix our elections. We can do the, the biggest cabal that saved the election. We can get Fetterman in there, even though he can't talk or read. We can get Biden in there. We can get anything done after we convince you that your own existence is isn't even actually real, basically. You could just change. Of course, you can only change your sex. You can't change your gender. You can't change your height. I can't be Steph Curry. I can't be Shaquille O'Neal. But if I wanted to say I was a woman, they would laugh, and, or not laugh, they would clap. I mean, they would laugh with happiness and say that they've got one. But anyways, this is what's happening over there. I'm preaching to the choir, I'm sure, but it's just incredibly triggering to watch these people pretend that there is... that. There is not, they will not for one single split second entertain the idea that there's somebody who doesn't agree with them. And as soon as you don't, they start writing hit pieces. So thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and of course, subscribe.